everybody, this is a video about building D&D characters in 12 minutes. This isn't a power trip. I'm not trying to prove that I can build a D&D character faster than anyone else. This is about helping other people get into the hobby quickly. I've seen people try to introduce their friends to D&D, and it takes like four hours to build a D&D character, or they send them over to D&D Beyond, and they click a bunch of menu buttons and options, and then they don't really understand what they've just done, and so on. This, I find, is a really nice kind of interactive but very quick way to get a, a playable character up and up and running. It's not going to be as detailed as, as it would be if you did spend four hours, but for someone who doesn't even know if they like the game yet, the D&D character part should be relatively quick and painless, I think. So this is how I do it. You might think that I would start at chapter one. Oddly enough, that's not actually where I start. I mean, I guess you could argue that it is, but really uh, what, I'm, what I'm really looking at is this quick build section. That's, the, that's the, the note that I focus on initially. So that, that's got everything to do with classes, and that's where I start. Classes have quick builds that help you, well, build that class quickly, and I find that most, most people new to D&D care more about what they're going to be doing in the game rather than who they are in the game quite yet. Not everyone. But a lot of people just, they, they want to know what they're going to be doing rather than whether they're an elf or a halfling or a human. So the classes I find, and this table specifically on page 45, chapter 3, this table specifically sums everything up very, very quickly. Everything you need to say about a class, well, not everything, certainly every, anything that you need to introduce a class is right here on this table. So let the new player read over each class read the one-line description of that class, and just pick it from there. And then a lot of the information that you need for the character sheet is actually right here as well. So let's arbitrarily assume that someone chooses a rogue as their initial uh, character class. It's a pretty common choice for people. So there's a rogue. There's the description. Tells us that, first of all, that the hit die is d8. You don't need to know what that means yet. You'll You'll learn about hit die as you play, so we'll just write it down a d8. Key Primary ability is dexterity, so we'll put a little star by dexterity just to remember that item. Saving throw proficiencies, dexterity, and intelligence. Well, that's right over here, so we'll fill in the little bubble by dexterity, and the one by, oh, that's not dexterity, the one by dexterity, and the one by intelligence. And then finally, we have armor and weapon proficiencies. So you might jot down what kind of armor you're proficient at and so on. And I don't want to take the time to do that right now because this, this marker is so big. Uh, I'll probably have to throw something from the computer up so that it's actually legible. Um, but yeah, you could instruct the person to copy all of that information down into the proficiencies box. Okay, so now they've got their class. They've decided. They're almost done with their class. Uh, just to pick up, just to make sure that everything is is complete, flip over to the rogue section that they've chosen, the class section that they've chosen, and take a look at the class features and at the, uh, the class table. So the features tells us that the hit die is 1d8 per level. Got that. Hit points is 8 plus con. Well, my method hasn't actually done attributes yet. So I'm writing down the hit point maximum, knowing that later I'm going to have to circle back around and add the constitution bonus. That's fine, though, especially if you've played often, you're kind of used to that. Hit points at, and I'm assuming that if you've played off often, you're, you're helping your friend build a character. So hit points at higher levels, okay, got that. So proficiencies, well, that's already been detailed. Tools, uh, thieves tools, I don't, I don't think that's in the table, so I'll write that down. Of course, that's just a proficiency with thieves tools. That doesn't mean they get thieves tools. Saving throws, we did that. Ch skills, choose four from acrobatics, athletics, and blah, blah. This part isn't actually all that important because according to Tasha's, we can essentially just choose five standard and then two, uh, two extras for your background. And I'm not going to do a background. So 
really it's not that big of a deal, but we could do that right now. We could just say, okay, well, let's say that they want to be stealthy, they want to have sleight of hand, they want to be deceptive, and they want to be perceptive as well. So they'll do perception. One, two, three, four. Uh, and then two for their background. So we can choose two more. We'll just say, well, let's say persuasion and history. Uh, from their background, whatever their background is. And they can just make up their background according to Tasha's Cauldron. Okay, finally, we've got equipment. So they could write down their equipment. They would have a short sword, and they would have a bow, and they would have daggers, and they would have leather, armor, and so on. So they would write all of that stuff down here in their in their equipment box. Oh, and thieves tools, that's kind of important. So they'll put down that they have thieves tools. Now they've got, um, according to the rogues table here, they've got three features at this level. They've got expertise, uh, sneak attack, and thieves can't. So we could write down uh, thieves can't in the language box. We could write down expertise over here and sneak attack here. Now maybe you haven't played a rogue personally or or often or maybe you're you haven't played that much at all and you're just watching this video to build so you would then continue into the class uh, description and look up what expertise means oh well it says choose two skill proficiencies uh, or one and your proficiencies with your thieves tools and you you get double proficiency with that okay so now we know and we can choose two two proficiencies and I'll take I'll, I'll take actually stealth and tools, and now we know that expertise gives us double proficiency. Perfect. And then the next one is sneak attack. Okay, it looks like that gives you a D6 bonus at first level on an attack. Uh, so yes, we can write that down as well. Perfect. I think we're done with the class. That's all taken care of. So next step, I do the attribute scores. Actually, I'll go ahead and write down what class they, they chose, Rogue One. Okay, um, so attribute scores. Well, oh, and uh, actually from that table as well, we got our, we got the number for the uh, proficiency bonus. Uh, you, you, might, you might already know that just by heart. If you've played a lot, you would know that it was plus two and then plus three at level five and so on. But uh, it, it does tell you in the table as well. Okay, attribute scores. I just use the standard array. 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, and 8. So you can give them those numbers, have them choose, maybe give them some guidance about, well, dexterity, remember, is your key ability, so maybe you want to do that. You, maybe you want to give the, the big number to that one. So that's 15. And constitution, we know, influences your health point, and maybe you want to stay alive, so... We'll put 14 into Constitution. Uh, 13, let's put that into Charisma, because we're trying to be persuasive and, and, and so on. Uh, and then Wisdom, let's make that our dump stat at 8. Uh, intelligence, uh, let's do 12 for Intelligence, and then the 10 we'll put into uh, Strength. According to Tasha's Cauldron, you can boost one of those scores by 2 and come up with a, a reasonable character. So we'll boost the wisdom up to 10. And then you could explain to the, the player the, how the modifiers work, or you could show them the table in the player's handbook that translates it all. And then they would know that, okay, so for a plus 10, they get a plus, for a 10, they get a plus zero. For a 12, they would get a plus one. For a 13, they would also get a plus one. And then for the 14 and for the 15, they would get a plus two. Now we've got a value in our dexterity, so we could, if we wanted to, address this middle column. The middle column has is kind of the weird stuff, because it's got the, the really malleable information in it. Some of it's not always the same, uh, depending on your race. So you would then show the person there uh, the, the race section, and they probably have an idea of fantasy races already. We all kind of do. So let's say that they choose a halfling, kind of a classic uh, archetype for a rogue. Halfling, and you might look through the halfling. Maybe you don't play halfling all that often, so you kind of maybe skim through there, see if there are any, any special information that you might need to know. For instance, halfling luck. That sounds pretty great. Okay, well, we'll take it. 
We also learn that halflings have a speed of 25 feet rather than 30 feet, so we can do that. Like I say, this is the middle row is a little bit funky, but 25 feet for speed. Uh, in, in initiative, we can tell the person, hey, well, your initiative is just your dexterity, unless you have some other thing modifying it, which you don't. Your armor class is 10 plus your dexterity, but you also have leather army, ar armor, so that's a plus one, according to the player's handbook. And again, you know, like, I, I like to show people the data without sort of overwhelming them, so rather than necessarily, like, focusing on it, just kind of, like, tell them the information and then show them in the, in the book where the data came from. Like, I, I know that you get a plus one uh, on that because see here under leather armor, it's 11 plus your dex, so that's 10 plus one plus your dex, which is two, so it's 13. And, and that, that way they know, they understand sort of the relationship of all that stuff. Coming down, well, their, their hit point maximum, remember, is eight plus their constitution. Well, their constitution bonus is a plus two, so actually their max health right now is 10. And their D8 is still one, is one D8, and you can tell them, well, you'll get more hit die as you level up. You have no money because you took all the equipment that the, the player's handbook offered you, but you'll earn money as you adventure. And that's it. I mean, that's, that's really the, that's the character build, and it's probably been roughly 12 minutes. So that's how I do it. And, and yes, there are things missing. There's, there's, you know, quite a lot missing. I mean, they've got no background. Oh, their passive perception. Their wisdom is zero, so that's just going to be a 10. There, that's it. So there is stuff missing, but generally speaking, for a first-level character, this is plenty for someone to keep track of. They've got special abilities that they're going to have to learn to use as they play. They've got weapons that they'll have to try out during battle. They've got a hit die that they still don't quite really understand what that means. They've got hit points. How quickly do those go? I don't know. They'll discover that. So this is all information that, to them, is a lot of information to a new player. But it, it, and it, and it shouldn't take two hours or one hour or four hours to get this amount of information. So this is enough to get them started playing. They'll, they'll learn the game. They'll figure out the parts that, that, that actually matter. And, and then they can go back and build a, a better character or they can build, they can go read the player's handbook and flesh this character out more and maybe make some changes. So this, for my money, is, is the quickest way to get someone started playing D&D. Give it a go.